Good morning and welcome to our Easter service this morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to be here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And a very warm welcome to everyone this morning. I know that many folks are away on holiday today. I uh, can understand that perfectly well. But it's good to have folks here and especially watching online uh, today. There are one or two uh, notices. Um, there'll be a retiral, a retiral offering after the service this morning for the work of the Smiles Foundation, a Christian charity with vision, commitment, and determination to make difference in the lives of people living alone in poverty uh, and in desperate need in Romania. So that's after the service. And on Saturday, being the end of the month, Saturday the 27th, the community breakfast will be happening uh, in the hall along there. And if you're able to come along and just show a friendly face to visitors who come in, then that will be a, a great thing uh, as well. So let's worship God together. We sing our first hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today, all on earth and angels say. The first hymn on the sheet. together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, eternal in the heavens, we come before you this morning to give you the praises of our hearts, to lift our hearts and our voices to you. For you're the God who loves us, the God who has made all things, and the God who has come to us in Jesus Christ to show us what you are like. You're a God of great love and compassion and truth and grace, and the God who gives life, the God who raised Jesus from the dead on the third day, according to the Scriptures. And we thank you that the one who died for us is the one who is now risen and stands for us, who is on our side to show us that when he says it is finished, when Jesus cries out, it is all done, sin has been dealt with, then we know that that's true. And Lord, we come to you this morning, uh, perhaps with things in our hearts and minds, not just our burdens and our concerns and our worries about all our circumstances, but also we come because we know we've gone wrong sometimes. We've done things that are not the way they should be. And we ask your forgiveness for our sins of thought and word and deed. And as 
We ask for that forgiveness. We thank you that you have promised that it will be given, that that blood of Jesus cleanses us from every sin. So we thank you for these things, and we thank you that in that resurrection, sin and death and all the evil things have been dealt with, and we have that promise that one day all things will be made new. And we thank you we can share in that even this morning. So Lord, be with us, we pray, young and old together. We ask your blessing upon our worship. We ask it in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together the family prayer to say these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's, uh, it's good to have the praise band with us again this morning. We've had them once before. And it's good that they were able to lead us in our singing. It's good also to have the children there. And uh, this is a song that I hope you'll know. It's called, This is a Day That the Lord Has Made. And the second verse tells us this is a day when Jesus rose again. And that's what remem- we're remembering uh, this morning. So let's, uh, let's sing this. Uh, this is a day that the Lord has made. reading this morning appropriately has the heading, Jesus has risen. It doesn't say hallelujah after it, but we can add that. Why don't we do that right now? Jesus has risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's hear the Word of God as we read from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and the first dozen verses. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. <coughs> They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. 
When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Amen. May God bless to us that reading from his word. Nice to see you boys and girls here. Good to see these uh, Easter bonnets as well. You might have put a lot of work into making those Easter bonnets look really good. Now, I'm looking for somebody to help me this morning. Do you think anybody would, can ask for a volunteer? Come on, then, would you like to come out and help me? Would you like to come out here and everybody can see your wonderful bonnet as well? Why, <laughs> oh, you look smashing. Isn't that lovely? You want to stand up here? Now, are you feeling strong? Be strong, because I want you to hold this for me. Can you hold it with two hands? Right. Can you hold it really? Can you turn around so everybody can see? And there's people over here as well, look, because they need to see. Can you turn right round? So the choir there and the musician, there's nothing for them to see at the moment, but let and turn right round here and let people see here. Do you want to have a practice at that? Right. Start over here. Everybody can see. Now turn right round. So everybody can see. Everybody see? Good. Right. Because I'm going to write something on there. And then I need you to hold it for me because I need three hands. And I've only got one hand. I've only got two hands, right? I bet your mum says that to you all the time, doesn't she? Number one plus number three equals seven. Right. Show that to everybody. Start around here. One plus three. So everybody can see. Turn right round. Everybody see? One plus three equals seven. What do you think? You show that to your teacher. What do your teacher say? What should it? One. Is there something missing? You need to put something in there so that one plus three plus something else equals seven. What should we put in there? Yeah? Three. One plus three plus... I'll tell you what, you come and do it. <laughs> Save my knees. Right. Which colour would you like to use? Red, blue, blue. Right, okay, take the top off and write that what you think. Plus, you need to put a plus in between. Right, thank you. Do you want to show that to everybody? What's your name? Fiona. Fiona. Iona, sorry, right, Iona. Do you want to show everybody? One plus three plus three. Show everybody, turn right round, watch your head on this. Everybody sees. Is that a right answer? Are we all agreed? So we'll give that a tick. Right. Now, I'm going to rub that all out and do another one. You okay? Iona, you all right holding that? One plus three plus... Right, let's try... Let's try... Fifteen... Plus six... Equals... Twenty-nine... Is that... You better show everybody, you know, they might not believe I've written that. Fifteen plus six equals twenty-nine. Turn right round. Everybody see it? 15 plus 6 equals 29. Anybody any ideas? What You need something there so it adds up, because it doesn't add up as it is. Oh, some bright sparks here. Just a minute. Anybody want to go? The adults are all puzzled. Do you know, do you know, what, the, do you know what the answer is? You know, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. You can have a try. Do you want to have a try? I'm trying to think myself what the answer is. <laughs> right. What colour would you like? Green. green. Okay. You put in green what you think the answer is. Oh, yeah. Nice and small in case you're wrong. Nobody can see it. <laughs> right. Do you want to turn around and see if that's right? Can everybody see? 
is put eight there. 15 plus six plus eight equals 29. Turn right round so everybody can see. Right, is that right? Shall we give that a tick? Shall we try a really hard one for the... Maybe that was hard enough for people. Let's try... Let's try one with pictures instead. Let's try... Better do it in black, because that's the easiest one to see. Let's try... See if you can see how good my drawing is. What do you think that is? Yeah? A flower, yeah, a daffodil. Okay, I've got a daffodil plus... Anybody know what that is? You better get... My drawing's not that great, I know. If you get this... An egg. A daffodil plus an egg equals Easter. Right. You want to show everyone? You can see what a great drawer I am. A daffodil, turn it right round, right round, plus an egg equals Easter. Is that right? Does that add up? Is that what Easter's up? Maybe I should have drawn an Easter bonnet as well. That would have really showed it off, wouldn't it? Do you think a daffodil plus an Easter egg is Easter? Yes. Anybody think it's not? Anybody think we need something else in here? What do you think? You think it's not really what you... To, to a lot of people, you would have maybe all sorts of things in there. You might have a, a woolly lamb, or you might have a, an Easter bonnet, or you might even have God in there to make sure that that was what Easter was about. Okay? Okay. Let's see if I can find my cloth. And we'll try just one more. Because I think we're going to need to have sing a song so that people can have a sing. Right. Try this one. Okay. Here we have. What's that? You know, turn around and let people see. Iona, that's it. Everybody see. We've got a. Yeah. A cross, right. A cross. And this is a stone. And that is an empty tomb, right? And that equals big word. Cross plus an empty tomb equals resurrection. Do you think that's right? Resurrection is like Jesus being raised from the dead. You've got to turn right around so people can see that. You did really well here. Great. Right? So you've got a cross and an empty tomb. And you know, some people, they say, I don't see how if Jesus died on the cross and then they came along and found an empty tomb, I don't see how that adds up to the resurrection. And they say, you know, I try to think about these things and it doesn't really add up. But what they re don't realize is you've got to have something else in there. You've got to add something. And the thing you've got to add is God. Because God is the one who makes all that add up. God hadn't done anything. And Jesus had gone into the tomb and there wouldn't have been any resurrection and there wouldn't have been any Easter. And you know, when the disciples, we just had that reading there, <clears throat> that Alec did. And when those disciples and Mary first went to that tomb, they couldn't make sense of it. They knew that Jesus had died on the cross. They knew the tomb was empty. But they forgot about the power of God because they were so upset. It was really hard for them. And they couldn't quite make it add up. But they did. And we're going to hear a bit more about that later. Thank you, Ione. You did a great job. Give it a clap. Well done. That was great, thank you. Now we're going to sing again. Um, Low in the grave he lay, Jesus, our Saviour, Jesus, my Lord. <laughs>
And so the story moves on and Christ ascended and we move forward, the early churches being formed, the apostles, and also Paul, and Paul in the church in Corinth, and he thought he would tell them. He would tell them exactly what we've been hearing about in that first section from Rob, and we'll hear some more shortly. Let's hear a few, just a few verses from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just the first four verses. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. May God bless to us these readings from his Word. When you think back to that, uh, that first reading, when the disciples went to the tomb, and when Mary and the disciples came back, he says the disciples thought it was a load of nonsense. They thought it was an idle tale. Do you know anything about nonsense? Did Granny ever say that's a piece of nonsense? My mother-in-law used to say that all the time, usually after I'd said something. <laughs> but we all know about nonsense. Maybe you know, now this is not just the children, I think those who've grown up and are now far too old for Mr. Men books will know all about this. Those who have children and grandchildren will be reading this book to their kids. So I think most of us, maybe not all of us, will know something about the Mr. Men and maybe Mr. Nonsense. Do you know about Mr. Nonsense? Have you read this book? Yeah? All the way through? Yeah? Well, he lived in a place called Nonsense Land. He lived, he lived in a house in a tree, a tree which had pink leaves on it when it wasn't even autumn, so it was a bit of a nonsense place. And can you remember that story about one night when it snowed? Can you remember that bit of the story? Maybe you don't, I'll remind you. It snowed, and with it being nonsense land, it wasn't white snow. Do you know what color it was? It wasn't red. It was yellow. Yellow snow. Have you ever seen yellow snow? If somebody said to you, yeah, if somebody said there'd be yellow snow, you'd say, what a piece of nonsense. Yellow snow, never heard of yellow snow, but there it was. In fact, when Mr. Nonsense woke up the next morning, he looked out and he thought it was custard. That's what it says, custard. And he had his friend staying with him, Mr. Silly, who had round snowballs, and Mr. Nonsense, being Mr. Nonsense, do you know what shape his snowballs were? Square, they were, square snowballs. Just a lot of nonsense, isn't it? Absolute nonsense, and that's why it's such a funny story. Nonsense. Do you know about nonsense rhymes or nonsense stories? Do you ever do that? When I was at school, we used to have one that went, one fine day in the middle of the night, two dead men got up to fight. You see, people know this. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords and shot each other. You could do that. One fine day in the middle of the night, two dead men got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords, and couldn't do it. It wouldn't happen, would it? It would be impossible to do that. It's just a lot of nonsense. But the other thing it calls it in that section is an idle tale. And an idle tale is someone would say, that's just a lot of nonsense, that's an idle tale. That would never happen. When I was young, and when most people here were younger, they might have seen a film, or they might have seen a book called The First Men in the Moon, which you might have a picture of. Now, that is a picture of the book called The First... Can you see the spaceship on there? Yeah. The spaceship is that... that round thing in the corner. I remember seeing that film long ago, before, before anybody actually went to the moon. And we said, oh, what a story. Imagine going to the moon in a, in a spaceship shaped like that. And we said, that's an idle tale. That will never happen. 
And there was another book. Now, I need to tell you this. To you folks, 1984 is history. But to most of us here, well, they're not most of us, but a lot of us here, when we were younger, we were your age, 1984 seemed years and years ahead of us in the future. Can you believe that? And we used to think 1984 is so far away. And in that book, there were cameras everywhere. And a big sign that said, Big Brother is watching you. That's where that expression comes from. And we thought, oh, we'd never have that. Imagine cameras in your living room so you can't go anywhere without everybody seeing what you're doing on a camera. And yet, look now. We've got CCTV and surveillance camera. We can't go anywhere without being on film. And if you've got a laptop, and if you're not very careful, somebody's looking through your webcam into you, wherever you might be. And that's a great reality. So... Although it seemed an idle tale then, it's not such an idle tale now. All these things that have come to pass, but at the time we thought they were an idle tale. And when the women came back from the grave, where they said Jesus had gone, he says the disciples thought it was nonsense, and they thought it was an idle tale. You know, sometimes boys and girls tell stories, don't they? They tell tales of things that didn't happen. Sometimes they say that to get somebody into trouble, which is not very nice. But sometimes people say it because they wish it would happen. I knew a little boy in a school where I used to be, and he, used, he never really went on holiday. But after the holidays, he used to come and he used to tell everybody at school, I went to Florida for my holidays, and he hadn't. And he used to tell his friends his uncle was an airline pilot, and his uncle wasn't an airline, but he wanted that to be true. And he wasn't telling lies. He just, he just really wanted that to happen. And when the women came back, I think those disciples probably thought, they just want that to be true. It's not really true. But of course, as we find out, it was true. And it wasn't nonsense. And it wasn't an idle tale. It's something that had really and actually happened. And we'll hear a little bit more about what the angel said to Jesus and we'll tie it in with that reading that Ali just read now uh, in a moment. But let's, uh, let's uh, what are we doing now? Make sure I've got it right. Let's have the offering. I think we'll do that next. <clears throat>
us pray. Our gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for every good thing that we have, for your mercies that are new each morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for all you give us in Jesus, your Son. Thank you for his death and resurrection for us. And Lord, we ask that you would receive these gifts and bless them and use them in the service of your kingdom. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's uh, sing again now what a wonderful saviour is Jesus. It's this next hymn on our sheet. <laughs> spoke to Mary and the disciples there was something else that they said which is really important and they said remember what he said I've got a picture here of uh, anybody tell me what that picture is up on the screen there what is it what does it look like yeah a finger and on that finger is a knot why would somebody tie a knot on their finger, do you think? Any ideas why somebody would tie a knot on their finger? Maybe they don't have a ring. Maybe they like a ring and they don't have one, so they tie a bit of string on their finger instead. Anybody going to tell me that? No. Okay, I'll tell you. Although I think you know anyway. It's to remember something. The thing is, if you've got a, a, a piece of, a piece of uh, thread on your finger or something, and you look at it and say, oh yeah, that's to remind me to remember something. <laughs> but you know what happens, don't you? <laughs> what am I supposed to remember? It's to remind you to remember what you've forgotten to remember. And it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? And maybe the angel said to, G to the disciples, he said, remember what Jesus said. Does your mum ever say that to you or your granny or a teacher? Remember what I said? You ever heard those words? Remember what I said? Maybe you go out on a shopping trip. It's not your kind of shopping trip, it's your mum's kind of shopping trip. And she goes to the shops and there's all sorts of things. There's no sweeties there, there's, there's no toys, it's just things your mum or granny or somebody wants. And you go along and it's so, so boring. It's, I, I remember, no, I'm not, I'm not going to give you any more reminiscences, I've given you enough already today. But you do get like that. And maybe before you go, your mum knows you, you know. And she knows you don't like that. And she says to you, if you just come with me to the shop, at the end I'll buy you something nice. 
And so you go around the shops and you say, oh, it's so boring, do we have to do this? And she says, remember what I said? If you keep going, we'll get something. And you say, oh yeah. And so you just keep going a little bit longer. Or maybe you say, can I go out to play? She says, well, you tidy your room first. And then you can go out to play. You say, all right, I'll do that later. Always later, isn't it? And uh, you sit and you do a bit, a few things. You say, Mom, can I go out to play? She says, remember what I said? You tidy your room and you go out to play. Oh, yeah. Because when somebody says, remember what I said, it's really important. Especially if it's somebody who can tell you that sort of thing and say that sort of thing to you. And very often it might be, remember what I said, no fighting, no quarreling, all sorts of things. And the angel said to the disciples, they said, remember what he said, how he would be crucified. And on the third day, he would rise again. And we were reading through the Gospels in church a wee while ago now. And the disciples realized that Jesus was really important. And they realized that he was the Messiah, the King, and that he was the Son of God. And Jesus said to his disciples, he said, the Son of Man, that is me, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, I'm going to be buried, and I'm going to be raised on the third day. And he told them that again, and again, and again, and again. He told them loads of times that that's what was going to happen. And yet when it did happen, they didn't really understand what was going on. And they didn't, to be honest, really believe it. And the angels, they said to Mary, remember what he said, how he said this would happen. Now look, he says, Jesus was crucified. And Mary, and they, they couldn't argue with that. There was no doubt about that. Jesus had been crucified. And they said, look, he's not here. And they couldn't argue with that either. He's, he's not there. So, so far, two out of two are right. That he has risen. So to make three out of three, that was right as well. Jesus had risen. Now, how good is your memory? Do you remember things? I want you to remember a verse out of the Bible. And I'm going to, when you come to church next week, I'm going to ask you if you can remember it. But this is the verse, right? Are you with me? The first part of the verse is seven words. Seven words, right? He is not here. He has risen. Right? He is not here. He has risen. And if you're really doing well, you can say that's Luke chapter 24, verse 6. Do you remember that as well? So, he is not here. He has risen. Luke 24, 6. Right. Who'd like to come out here and say that? Come on then. Take a shot. Let's see if this is working. Is this working? Right. Right. Uh, here we go. Come on. He has risen. Good. What was a bit before it? Think about that tomb. They look in there. There's nothing there. So what do they say? He is... He is not here. He has risen. Luke. Is that your name, Luke? Yeah, what's your name? Yeah, Luke. Luke 26. Nearly 24, 6. Luke 24, 6. That's very good for a, a brave man. Does anybody else want to have a go? Any of the grown-ups want to have a go? No. Tell you what, let's all say it together, shall we? Then we know and we can remember it. Right. I'll just say it first and then we'll all say it together. He is not here. You think this empty tomb is not, he, has, he is not here. He has risen. Luke 24, verse 6. Right. All together. He is not here. He has risen. Luke 24, verse 6. So when you come back into church next week and I ask you, you'll be able to tell me, won't you? I'll see if I do that for you. And the thing is, the thing is later on, Alec read another reading that Paul wrote to the people in Corinth, the church in Corinth, who kind of lost their way. 
they were kind of involved in all sorts of things that they shouldn't be involved in. But they'd also forgotten what really mattered. And Paul says, I passed on to you as of first importance, more important than anything else in the world, I pass this on to you. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. He was crucified, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. And he said, I want to remind you of these things. And we all need reminding. And Easter comes around every year, but we still need reminding. Of course, Easter's for all the year round as well. And today we celebrate Easter because of the apostles' testimony, what they saw, what they wrote down, what we have in the Scriptures, so that we believe those things because they're according to the Scriptures. And it's so that things don't add up, it's so that things do add up. It's not so that it's an idle tale or nonsense, but because it is the truth about Jesus and what God has showed us. It's something wonderful God has done to forgive us our sins. You know, when, when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. And in another gospel, it says, Jesus gave a loud cry. So when Jesus said, it is finished, it wasn't, oh, it's all over. I'm done. It wasn't that. The fact that he cried out with a loud cry means that Jesus was in, in control of what he was saying. And he says, it is finished. Sins have been dealt with. And when Jesus was raised on the third day, very often in the Bible it says, God raised Jesus. It does say occasionally, Jesus rose. But mostly it says, God raised Jesus because God saw what his son Jesus did on the cross, dealt with our sin, and he raised him from the de dead to say, this is my guarantee that what Jesus has done is finished and it's true. Our sins are forgiven. If they weren't, Jesus would not have been raised. So we believe because of who Jesus is and what God has shown us. And Easter's not just about life after death, is it? It's about our lives now where we are, whether we're young, whether we're old, whether we're at work, whether we're retired, whether we're in hospital, or whether we're running about full of joy and energy, wherever we may be. It's about living our lives now in the life of the risen Christ because we are Easter people and we sing what someone called the irrepressible Easter song. You can't keep it down. It always comes out. And those people in Sri Lanka you may have heard of on the news, I didn't hear it, but somebody was telling me about it this morning. Churches destroyed, people killed, in Sri Lanka today at Easter because it is a Christian festival and in some parts of the world people just don't like Christians and this is what they do. But those people I know from history and everything else, the history of the church, they will be irrepressible. You will not be able to keep God's people down no matter what. And that's as true for them as it is for you in your work, in your family, wherever it is. Jesus is risen, and well might we say, Alleluia. Let's pray. Our gracious God, we give you thanks for the wonderful message of Easter. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you that for, it's for the youngest child here today in their Easter bonnet. It's for the not so young, and however we may feel in today, Lord, it is for us. And we thank you for that. And we pray for those who especially need our prayers today for those who are struggling, perhaps with illness or with hospital treatment or with chronic things that they have to live with. And Lord, it can be very hard. And we pray, Lord, that this Easter message would touch their lives. We pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, and especially in Sri Lanka this morning. And pray, Lord, that they would know your power, your compassion, and, oh, Lord, most of all, your great comfort today. Oh, Lord, we pray for restraint on the powers of evil in our world today, whether it be there or Northern Ireland or wherever. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our worship by singing the last hymn there, See What a Morning Gloriously Bright. <coughs>
of the risen Christ in your lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Thank you.